Welcome to the Department of Neurology. My name is Doris Foley and I'm the Residency and Fellowship Coordinator for this wonderful department. We're going to tell you a little bit about our department here and why you should be interested in us to pursue your education in neurology. What can we tell people to convince them to come to Stony Brook? One of the best things about Stony Brook is the people. But let me tell you about our department. First of all, Stony Brook in general, the hospital is a tertiary care medical center. We are the only tertiary care medical center in all of Suffolk County. For those of you not familiar with our area, there's our map of Long Island. We have a brand new hospital building that opened up in 2019. It's called the New Hospital Pavilion. All of our ICUs are there. Most important for us is the neurocritical care unit is there. There's also adjacent to it a new um, MART building. It's the Medical Research Translation Building. A lot of research is there. The medical school has its space there. We have a level one trauma center here at Stony Brook. You may be thinking, why do I care about trauma? I'm not going in to be a surgeon. But neurologists see a lot of head trauma. We see spine trauma. So we actually get a lot of those consults. So it actually really helps. We're actually a very important referral source for all the other hospitals out on Long Island, particularly for stroke. You may have already heard we have a mobile stroke unit. There are these ambulances that can pick up patients. There is a CT machine in the ambulance. There is a CT angio machine in the ambulance. They can be examined by a stroke doctor remotely while they're in the ambulance. They can even get TPA. We have neuro-ophthalmology, neuropathology, neuropsychology all right here. One of the most important things about Stony Brook, though, is our department. We have world-class faculty here, a lot of active research that happens. We have a retreat that happens twice a year where we really can go over resident development, faculty development, and also talk about what's working in the program, what's not working in the program. Based on resident feedback, we can make modifications for the following year. The thing that really stands out about Stony Brook is the attendings. World-class, phenomenal attendings. I have the camaraderie of my attendings. I feel like a colleague. It's not even just so much like they're teaching me, we're teaching each other. It's amazing. The attendings here are passionate in their love of neurology, their desire and dedication to teaching the residents. In their training here in neurology, you get the finest of the fine, neurologists who know their skill, who are always reaching out to learn more, to teach you more, to encourage you. So Stony Brook, in our department, we are a Joint Commission Advanced Comprehensive Stroke Center. That's the highest tier of stroke center that you can have. We also have a Huntington's Disease Society of America Center of Excellence, a comprehensive level four epilepsy center. We have inpatient video epilepsy monitoring units. We have a neuromuscular center. We have an ALS Center of Excellence. So a lot of really exciting things happening here at Stony Brook. All of our residents graduate here with excellent clinical training. I will hear from residents after they leave, they're off in fellowship, and they call me and they say, wow, I think I, I really learned more than I realized. We have a diverse patient population here at Stony Brook, both in terms of the types of diseases that we see. So you will see the bread and butter neurology. You're going to see headache, you're going to see back pain, but you're also going to see all those really interesting diseases, you know, the zebras, the kinds of things that made you want to choose neurology for a career. But it's also diverse in terms of patient background, socioeconomic status, uh, ethnic background. If you look at Suffolk County and you look at our catchment area, you can see that it's extraordinarily large. We get probably as much diversity as most of the city programs. In addition to our clinical training, we also really like to highlight our didactic training. We have morning report almost every single day for all of our residents. So morning report here at Stony Brook is a very unique situation, mostly because of who we're presenting to. So Dr. Patricia Coyle is a neuroimmunologist, world-renowned, probably one of the world's most foremost experts on MS. Every day you have this resource to present overnight cases, so you are making real life decisions overnight, and then in the morning you get to discuss this. And it's great because, you know, you, you're, you're figuring out the next day what could you have done better? And we also have a boot camp um, every summer, neurology boot camp. Instead of push-ups and sit-ups, we go over neurology. Throughout the year, we also have a monthly topic. So maybe September is devoted to stroke, October is devoted to movement disorders, and so on. All of our residents are assigned a faculty mentor. Actually, they're not assigned, they pick their own. So by December of that first year, the residents decide what faculty member they kind of gel with, and they're going to pick their own mentor. 
All of our residents go on to really excellent fellowship positions. Our residents are, come from great places, and we go to great places. Nobody knows this, it's a little secret, but I love it and I want to share that with you. We also have a lot of resident research happening here. Every resident is required to do some type of scholarly project, as well as a group quality improvement project. At the end of the year, we have residents present their research at Grand Rounds. A lot of our residents go on and present their research or posters at the American Academy Neurology meeting as well. Being so close to the university offers potential for cutting edge research and collaborations. Our residents have a lot of opportunities for teaching medical students and that's something that I think is really important in a program. Everyone knows that the best way to learn is to teach. In general, I think that one of the highlights in addition to our clinical training is just the overall vibe that's here. As I mentioned, all of our faculty and residents get along. All of the faculty have an open door policy. You can go up to any faculty member at any time with a question. The faculty are open, they're available when you need them. I have everyone's phone number in my phone. I can text them on weekends with questions. It's something that I didn't see when I was traveling to other programs, something that made this place special. All of the residents are friends with each other. They socialize with each other. They hang out with each other. We really do try to stress our resident well-being. They see a lot at Stony Brook. They take care of many patients with different disorders, different diseases, and uh, they do that as a team, and I think that is the key to our success. We love to work with each other. I know everybody says that, but I'm telling you, it is absolutely the truth. We go out together, we study together, we do exams together. If we're in the trenches and the call pagers going off, they help out with the calls and the consults. Everyone's running like a team, and it's important to have that. You're not gonna find that in every program. And I'm telling you, I'm very transparent, that's what this program has. It's a great place to work, it's a great place to live. The school districts here are excellent. There's a lot that Long Island has to offer. You can, you can get into the city if you wanna go into the city. You can go out east and you can go to the wineries, you can go to the beaches. Look, residency is filled with drama, it's filled with action, it's filled busy, busy, busy. Don't get me wrong, no matter what residency you go to. But to be in Long Island is nice because you still get the craziness of the hospital, but when you walk out, it's like you breathe. And that's what Long Island can offer you. We haven't talked about child neurology. Aren't they just tiny adults? No, I'm child neurology. They're not just tiny adults. Contrary to what people might believe, kids are not little adults. Pediatric neurology is the study of the developing nervous system. Syndromes and diseases like epilepsy, autism, ADHD, headache, but also the rare metabolic and genetic disorders. So let's talk about what it's like working with all of these other departments in the hospital, what it's like doing consults. You get to work with most of the departments in the hospital, especially the emergency room. The bulk of our consults come from the ER. Uh, you have a really close relationship. Even with the cardiac fellows, it kind of transcends all specialties because neurology really falls within, in a sense, every body system. So you get calls uh, for, from everyone. As you know, we go to a lot of stroke codes, we go to a lot of codes that are complex stroke interventions that neurosurgery also goes to. And I think we have a good relationship that we work together. One person will get the history, one person will do an exam, vice versa. We review the imaging together, so you're never really alone on it. We work very closely with them here. Many times uh, with acute stroke codes, we work side by side during the cases to help facilitate you know, intervention for the patient. So what do you guys do for fun? There is no fun. <laughs> Restaurants. Hiking. Fishing. Scuba Lyme disease. Diving. Scuba diving. <laughs> Some of us are married. Actually, several of us have children. Some are expecting children. We have uh, military members. It's a very diverse group of individuals, and it also makes it interesting. So our faculty is the, one of the best parts of our HOPE program. Wouldn't you agree? No. You forgot about Doris. I would never forget about Doris. <laughs> program coordinator extraordinaire. Yes. Why do you guys like Doris so much? Doris is like a second mom. She does everything uh, for us. She coordinates everything. All the things you even forget exist. Doris is always doing behind the lines, always working when you don't even know she's there. We couldn't function without Doris. Her door is always open. Um, whenever I need someone just to even talk about my day, she's there with a smile on her face and a box of chocolates in hand. <laughs> So Doris makes this place special. As the coordinator for the residency and fellowship, I'm the first person that you'll meet when you walk through that door in the morning. All the residents come in here first thing, they check to see how many candies are left in the basket. 
So another testament to the quality of our program and what it's like to be here is the sheer number of residence fellows and attendings that are really homegrown. We've had medical students that chose to stay here for residency. We have residents who chose to stay here for fellowship. And so many of our attendings actually were residents here. I myself was a medical student here. So either we're too crazy and lazy to leave or there's something really holding us here. I stayed here for fellowship and that says a lot. I turned down the job, came to the fellowship because this program is amazing. Being here over 32 years, I've seen a lot of residents come and succeed and graduate and go on to further wonderful careers. It's not it's just about what we can give to you. It's what you give to us as well. How you encourage the attendings to become better teachers, supervisors. These are things that matter here at Stony Brook. There's nowhere else that I'd rather train. Oh look guys, in a Keith's row, let's go.